So sometimes if you have a very high energy, energy density process, you always have an undercut. That means the penetration may not be achieved if you do not have a keyhole. So in those applications, so we can also use a multi cathode trig process. So in this case, we melt more basically. So, so if you want to increase the productivity, so we can use instead of one tungsten electrode because we are always greedy, right? So we can increase the productivity and you can also avoid the undercut by melting more volume so the liquid can flow and fill the well cavity. So in this process, basically instead of one, we use three or even four or five and then we can continuously melt and then uh, so generally it does uh, the melting at one area and then we move to the next area, is not it? So when you are continuously welding, we have a problem, okay. So we melt and then move to the next area and weld and continuously and we will have overlapping. So multi cathode welding, it increase the productivity significantly because obviously you melt more. So you, this graph I borrowed it from and it is a very obvious graph. So you can increase the welding speed tremendously by using a, a multi cathode. For example, in this case in A is a 3 electrode with an, a significant lower current and you can weld it in a much higher velocities. So because you have uh, more electrodes, is not it? Okay, other, other development is uh, very commonly used in industrial scale is known as ATIG. A stands for activated TIG. What is activated here? Well pool is activated. Okay. And before that in metallurgically lot of challenges yes, and if you are working in a steel plant, I always say no two microstructures are the same, okay. So no two costs are the same. You always have small variations, is not it? So even if you have a very small compositional variation and your well characteristics can be very different, okay. For example, you no, know, in this case I put two diagrams. Assuming this is the same composition with slight change in sulphur. Sulphur is changed to 0 0.05 into 0 0.01 and you do not care about it because you always say that it is one grade. So you, are really, you, are, you are choosing an year 65, year 25 because the composition in the standards are defined over ranges, is not it? But in a welding case, in a welding uh, condition, and it can cause significant difference in well geometry, okay. Say I will give you a classical example uh, we always face because of sulphur. So when you have a sulphur, the surface tension of the liquid pool changes significantly, okay. So imagine in two cases I am going to show you. So one case, you add a some element or the some element concentration is increased in such a way that surface tension of the liquid, it decreases as a function of temperature, okay. So surface tension is temperature and when you increase the temperature, surface tension of the liquid decreases, okay. That can happen. For example, you add uh, uh, elements and you to redu reduce surface tension as a function of temperature or you add some other element or you change the concentration of some other element such a way that the surface tension increases as a function of temperature, okay. And these two can play significant role in determining a well pool geometry. So you may be using in you know, a one sheet and you see that it is a very nice weld, fantastic, okay. Suddenly you change it to another supplier with the same grade, with the same welding parameter, you will never get the same geometry, okay. Even a small change in the chemistry can change the well geometry. Okay. But what is the role of uh, the activated TIG in that? That is what I am going to see. So imagine now the situation I told you. So in this case, two cases, high sulphur and low sulphur. If you add uh, sulphur, the surface tension of the liquid increases as a function of temperature. Okay. So this is the curve. 
So, this is for low carbon steel. If sulfur concentration decreases, that means that so in this case it is 0 0.08, in this case 0 0.01. You see a significant change in surface tension. Okay? So, if you remove the sulfur, surface tension decreases as a function of temperature. So, how does it influence the weld geometry? So, weld you have a temperature gradient, is not it? So, this well center line, sorry that is not well center line, that is going somewhere edge. So, you always have a maximum temperature well center line and when you move towards fusion boundary, you, you are familiar with the terminology right. So, this is fusion boundary and this is well center line. So, you always have a temperature gradient where well center line always at higher temperature, is not it? So, now imagine the case A. In case A, what it says is that the surface tension increases as a function of temperature. That means that liquid in the well center line will have a higher surface tension than your liquid in the fusion boundary, is not it? So, here high tension liquid and this is low tension liquid. So, then what will be the vertex formation? Okay, high tension, low tension, is not it? So, high tension liquid will pull low tension liquid and then you have a flow going inwards, is not it? So, you will have a flow will be going like that, is not it? So, you have high tension liquid and low tension liquid and this surface tension gradient is generated by the composition. Okay, composition is homogeneous but temperature is different. As a function of temperature, viscous, uh, the, the surface tension change. Okay? So, liquid at the middle will have a high surface tension than the liquid in the fusion boundary, then you will have a inward flow. If you have inward flow, obviously you will have a very good penetration because the heat is transferred, is not it? So, you will have a, a shallow or less wide the bead and then deep penetration, the deep weld clear because the flow is pulled inward, yes. So, now the same condition all the welding parameters are the same, but you are welding this material, material B. So, in that case what happens? So, you have a weld liquid made. Now, unfortunately the liquid surface tension decreases as a function of temperature. So, then what will be the flow? Outwards, is not it? So, then you will have a, a wider bead with shallow penetration, is not it? <coughs> so, this is the classical example I just draw. Okay, so, in this case material B where surface tension decreases as a function of temperature. So, flow is outwards whereas, if the surface tension increases as a function of temperature, then the flow will be inwards and this is what known as uh, you know, cost to cost variation because every cost you may have a slight difference in sulphur and sulphur significantly change the surface tension. Okay? So, that can lead to a geometrical change. And this is a very common practical problem so, to achieve a, a good geometry over time and time and again. Okay, so, yeah, you may be uh, yeah, welding an uh, uh, almost same parameter, the morning shift guy would make a, a reasonable good geometry, the afternoon shift guy you will come up with an undercut. Okay? and you would go back and look at the material, uh, you cannot really see, everything is the same, same grade, same welding parameter and you will be wondering, so why it is happening undercut. So, uh, you, then if you look at the composition very clearly, the small variation in sulphur would lead to a variation in the well bead geometry. Okay? So, th this is very commonly 
observ observed phenomena the cost to cost variation and because of this. So, in a classical in, in, in a case B the flow will be outward then you will have a wider bead and shallow penetration and uh, in the case A where the surface tension increases as a function of temperature you will have inward vertex formation the flow formation and you will have a narrow and then and a deep penetration uh, weld. So, this problem somehow can be overcome by adding fluxes to the weld wall. So, so what we do is generally so if you make a bevel what is bevel? Th this machining so we you can have an a B bevel or K bevel. So, we prepare the edges before weld that is why it is known as bevel and we apply the fluxes on these uh, walls and these fluxes are generally the oxides or some salts. Generally the titanium oxide is commonly used uh, flux which change the surface tension ok. So, the effect of titanium oxide is more significant than the effect of sulphur ok. So, if you add titanium oxide the variation in sulphur is superseded by the addition of titanium oxide. So, you always have a same flow in the pool right and due to that uh, the variation composition small variation composition can taken care of, can be taken care of the addition of these fluxes ok. So, these fluxes are the role of these fluxes is still not clear, but it is assumed that they have a very significant effect on surface tension of the pool. So, if a sulphur changes to a surface tension value of uh, uh, 1 unit titanium oxide can ten change thousands of unit. So, that means that the smaller effect can be taken out. So, you always have effect of titanium oxide seen. So, that you can have a uniform wells made by the addition of these fluxes. So, this flux addition uh, is first done by Russians uh, so in the erstwhile USSR. There is a very famous uh, welding institute in Ukraine, it is called Patton Welding Institute, and they first thought about this again. They did a lot of work on um, uh, effect of uh, composition on the viscosity and surface tension. They found that uh, addition of titanium oxide is beneficial. And then you could get consistent well bead geometry by adding these fluxes, and they call that process ATIG, the activated TIG process. The flux chemistries are, are uh, uh, yeah, each company, if you are buying a uh, flux, they have their own secret. Uh, weapons, secret compositions, but most of the times generally they uh, contain uh, oxides of titanium, titanium oxide, silicon oxide or calcium fluoride CF2 and these are very commonly used mold fluxes right. So, yeah that is what I put it in words what I explained the surface tension of the pool can be changed significantly by adding salts and paste. The most common uh, paste are made of titanium oxide, silicon oxide. And by doing so, so we neglect or we overcome the small variation that generally seen with the composition. Yes, it's clear.